All right, I'm going to go ahead and get things started as people are still jumping on. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I am Erin Boyle from Marquee 360. I'm the marketing manager, and I'm going to be taking you through um, the first part of our presentation today. So today we're here to talk about um, projects for the web with the Power Platform and how we use the Power Platform to enhance projects for the web and to show you um, our solution. The agenda for today, I'm gonna to tell you a little bit more about Marquee 360. I have a few other speakers on with me that I'll introduce. We're gonna talk a little bit about the new Microsoft Work Management, and then we're gonna give you a demo of our solution on Project for the Web, and we're gonna have some time at the end for question and answers. So you, if you guys have questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to put them in the chat, and we'll try to get to them as we're going through. But if we don't, we'll definitely get to them at the end. Also, the session is being recorded, so we will um, reach out to you with the recording afterwards as well. So a little bit about Marquee 360. We are a Microsoft partner. We focus on project and portfolio management, cloud productivity, and collaboration. We have locations throughout the US, Canada, Europe, and Australia. Um, our goal is to always focus on um, your digital transformation using the Microsoft project platform and um, the Microsoft technologies. A lot of our employees um, and owners worked with Microsoft or they actually worked at Microsoft. So they've been working with Microsoft project for a long time, have a lot of experience. And they know when things are coming down the pipeline for Microsoft with the roadmap so we can anticipate those changes and get our customers ready for any changes, which is a huge plus. We like to partner with our customers and think of ourselves as an extension to your team. So we start um, with you on the envisioning side, what you need, what products you should be using, what solutions you should be using. And then we implement those for you and then we stay with you all the way to training, if you need extra help with workshops, support, and any enhancements down the road. So again, we do have locations all over the globe. And after the webinar, you're gonna be reached out by your account manager for your territory. So keep a lookout from those names. We have Megan from North America, Juan, from EMEA and Alex, he's in Australia and New Zealand. So they'll be reaching out to you guys with the recording from the webinar. So some of our services and the apps that we work with, um, we work with the Microsoft Work Management, like I said, so Project for the Web, Project Online. We do implementations and consulting services, envisioning workshops um, and support and training. So wherever you're at, in your transformation journey, whether you're working with project or any um, Power Platform, Power Apps, Power Automate, Power BI, we're ready to meet you where you're at. So if you're just getting started, we can help you. And then if you're, if you're just, um, you know, you might have um, some reports, but you're not able to make new ones, we can help with enhancements on that side as well. So I have speakers with me here today. So Jen Simon from Microsoft, do you want to say hi, Jen? Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining today. It's lovely to be here, and I'm very excited for this webinar. Marquee 360 has been one of my key project gold partners in getting our tools implemented. So thank you for joining. Awesome. Thanks, Jen. And I have Mia Reed with us from Marquee 360. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining. And Mia's going to go through our technical demo for us. And I'll kick it over to you, Jen. Hello, everybody. So as you may know, Microsoft has been on a journey for project and portfolio management. And Marquis has actually been along for the ride with us. So how we're really thinking about this now is really more work management and collaboration. So it really starts with planner and the information worker where people are doing running small projects, small teams, they need to track some tasks, maybe do some checklists. 
But then they find some constraints because they can't do dependencies or start and finish dates. And that's really when we grow up our customers into project for the web. And that's really meant for easy project management. It works. It's an all cloud solution working within all of the Microsoft suite. So you can do your planning on projects in teams. You can also um, utilize the Power App for strategy. And then as this product grows up, it is becoming an enterprise portfolio management tool. So we'll get there along the ride. And But if you have really robust projects and different things to do, then um, you certainly can still use Project Online and the desktop and Marquee can help with that. And actually I see the question on um, Project Online certification with GCC. So what's happening right now with the GCC for most of the people is the government cloud. So Project for the Web is released into the government cloud for state and local governments. It is not approved in GCC High for commercial customers yet. So if you are in the GCC High, our recommendation is to stay with Project Online at this point as it gets going as it is going through the approvals it does take quite a while because it's government as you can imagine so um the gcc was released earlier this year and we're hoping that it will be um, approved by the end of this calendar year for gcc high so thank you so much for joining and i'm very excited for you to see what mia has to show you thank you everyone awesome thanks jen And just to quickly go over the exact solution that you're going to see today. So our PPM 360, it's the project for the web accelerator that we built at Marquee 360. And it just it's a pre-configured app. So it gets you up and running much quicker with the solution. And it also gives you a little bit more functionality out of than you would normally get out of the box. So these are the um, points that we hit throughout the um, solution demo. So we're going to take you through the whole project life cycle. We'll start with intake and how we handle that, project creation and governance, schedule management, and then bring it all together with teams where you can work with all the functionality just inside teams, and then the reporting piece. And we also do have integrations, but we won't have time in this um, exact presentation to show you that. But if you're interested, you can definitely reach out and we can do more on that. And I'll pass it over to Mia for the demo. All right. Thanks a lot, Erin, and thanks, Jen. I'm going to start presenting my screen. Will someone let me know if my screen's visible? We can see. All right, great. So like Erin just mentioned, we're going to walk through the project lifecycle looking at this pre-configured solution that we've developed. Right now, we're going to start at the beginning of the project lifecycle, which is with Intake. What we're looking at on the screen right now is called Intake 360, and it's built in Power Apps. What we'll do is we'll start to create a new request. So we'll act like someone who's going to submit a new request, and then we'll move on to the next step, which is the approval process that will create a project from this request. What you see on my screen now is the Intake Gallery. Here, as you look through it, you'll see the intake requests that have already been submitted, and you'll also see some high-level information about these different requests that have been made. One of the things you can do in this gallery is you can interact. So if you would like to search for a project or a request that you were the sponsor of, and we'll do this with my name now, we'll search or we can filter this way. So it makes it really easy to find things. Another popular search here is to uh, filter by request status. So if we want to see what's been submitted versus which ones have been approved and the project was created or which ones are on hold or rejected, we can do that too. So we can add these filters here. And now I want to show you how we create one of these intake requests. There's a button right here on the forum called new project request. So we'll click that. And what we'll see here are a collection of different fields. So at the very top here, you'll see this different tabs. Each tab is going to have different fields based on the tab name. 
And then what we'll do is we'll work our way through the tabs and we'll fill in some of these fields. So first one is the request name, which will become our project name. We have a project sponsor, and a lot of these fields are going to have different field types. So I'd like you to kind of get a feel for the different types of entries we can make here. Some will look up to Active Directory or whatever you're using to manage your resources. There's a request type field here, and this one's actually pretty cool. What happens here is that we can have multiple different project types, right? So you can imagine that a marketing campaign project may have different needs than an IT project. The IT project might need a really de well developed project schedule and the marketing campaign might need more of a task list. So what we can do with this request type field is we can route this to become a certain type of project. For today, we're going to look at our project for the web solution, which we call PPM 360. So I'm going to select that request type. And then the other things that we'll see here are going to be some fields that we'll fill in to give an idea what this request is about. So a project description. And I'm not going to type in everything, but I do want to just put in a few keywords here. We can talk about what the challenge this is meant to, which challenge uh, should be overcome as a result of this project, the value that it will provide. And once we finish this first one, we can go ahead and work through the next tabs. So we can enter in what our timeline will be, our constraints if we know any. And these fields here, I do just want to make sure that it's really clear that what I'm filling in, this is all based on what we've pre-configured in this solution, but I don't want you to feel tied to it. What we typically do is we meet with you and gather requirements. Sometimes there are small changes like, you know, you might want request information instead of request info or something that aligns more with your business terminology. And then sometimes there are additional fields that need to be added here. So those are all things that can be updated. On the scoring tab, this is where we can list out your business drivers, things that are important for you as an organization. And for each one of those drivers, we can add in a rating. So either the submitter can do this or we can set it up so that as part of the approval process, someone that has more kind of company knowledge can fill these in. And if you have questions, please feel free to add those in the chat. I'm trying to keep an eye on it, but I know Aaron is also out there keeping an eye on the chat as well. For demo purposes, we've gone ahead and assigned each rating a numerical value, and then you can see the priority score is simply adding this numerical value together. We can do all kinds of calculations to come up with a priority score, but the priority score is meant to just give an idea of how this, this particular request fits with our overall needs as an organization. All right, so sometimes these are weighted averages. Usually we don't have the number showing there. So there are all kinds of possibilities to change what's what's here. And then the attachments area, this is where we can attach any information that would help us to give more color to this request. So we might have, um, let's just do a generic test attachment, but if we have anything that adds to this request, any background that we wanna share, we can go ahead and upload that here. And then as the submitter, once we've completed this form, and notice here that none of these fields are required. Typically, we would make some of these required, but once this is all filled out, we can go ahead and submit. So gathering an idea is as simple as that. We can navigate to that intake request and take 360 page. We can work our way through the gallery or we can create a new request and then submit that for approval. So now that I've clicked submit on that request, there are a few things happening behind the scenes. The approval process has essentially started. And what will happen is that this process is defined already based on business practices. What we're going to see is that a couple things will happen. When the approval process begins, whoever is set as an approver is going to be um, requested to evaluate this new request that's been entered. What we'll see and what I'll show you is that there are two ways that we'll be able to see that. We'll be able to see that 
um, because the request comes through via email. So I'll show you my Outlook inbox in a minute so we can look at what that email looks like. And then this also happens as part of the out of the box functionality in Microsoft Teams. So we'll be able to look at the request for approval there as well. Um, the approval process that we have set up in our demo environment is very straightforward just for demonstration purposes, but this is something where we could have, you know, multiple uh, approvers that are going to be notified at once or a sequential approval set of steps that will happen as well. Another thing that I didn't show here is that it is possible to save a draft of this. So if you're starting to fill out one of these requests and you need to pause and run to a meeting or something like that, one of the options would be to save a draft of this. And then there's a little edit button so you can always go back in, edit that request and enter in more information. All right, so I'll go ahead and show you my inbox that has the request for approval in it. I'll make that a little bigger. Part of what we'll see here is that some of the information from that intake request form display in the email. So we could set this up if you have approvers that just need some key information that they can see that in the email, but we'll always include a link back to the original request so that the approver can click this and then view the request so they could full the full picture before taking action. All right. Um, notice that there are two options here, approve and reject. Typically, we'll add something like on hold or request more information, but through this, we can use these buttons to interact with this and move this on to the next stage to get the project created. Before actually clicking anything here, I do want to show the request in Teams. All right, so you get an activity notification letting you know that a a um, a work request was submitted. And just like we saw in Outlook, I can see high level some of the information that was entered in on that request. So the business challenge, the value. I have a link back to the request. There is a place to add comments. This shows up in the email as well. But here I can also reassign and then I can reject and approve. I'm going to go ahead and approve this so that we actually have a project that we can look at together and work through. The nice thing about this is that all of my other approvals display here too. So it looks like I'm pretty up to date. I've canceled one, but the rest of these are approved. It looks like there's one I need to act on. It makes it so that everything is in one place and that makes it really easy to go ahead and make sure you're all updated with your um, with your approval requests. I'm going to bring my email back over for one sec. just to show that now that I've acted on this request, the email changes its format. So now I don't have to worry about looking at my email, you know, a week from now or even an hour from now and wondering if I still need to act on this. Looking at this email, I can see that this is already um, completed. I saw a question in the chat about being able to integrate with JIRA, and that is something that's possible. When we looked at these project types earlier or request types earlier, that is one of the reasons we would have a different request type because we might want to create a project type that is going to sync with JIRA or Azure DevOps or another system. All right. So at this point, we've created a new request. We went through the approval process and we saw that request get approved. So that means that we're going to have an a, a project that was created now. So I already have a tab open that shows um, PPM 360. This again is part of our pre-configured solution that involves Project for the Web. So what we're going to be looking at is Project for the Web, but you'll see some of the configuration here is part of that pre-configured solution. What we'll see here now, we're on the home page. Note that there's like a little navigation pane here on the left side. We can use this to get to different areas. So the home page we should take a quick look at because there's a lot of interesting information here. What we've got here is a roll up of different information about the projects that we have in the system. So looking here, we can look at projects by type. So it could be an IT project, a marketing project, a project that's going to sync over with JIRA. 
Um, we can also look at projects by state. So these are all fields that we're capturing on the project form, right? So because we're capturing those fields on the project form, we can view them here. We can view projects by overall health, and I won't go through all of these, but I will just scroll down so you can get an idea of what's possible here. OK, so we can use all of the data that we're collecting on this projects to slice and dice them and look at them from different perspectives. And all of this being here on the home page makes it really, really easy to get an idea of how things are going and what our portfolio looks like. What we'll see also at the end is that this information also rolls into Power BI. All right, so we will be able to see some Power BI reports that are based on the information we've uh, collect collected so far. So these are not interactive in the same way that Power BI is. When we get to Power BI, we will see that, you know, you click on a pie slice and it pops out. There are, you know, some different ways to interact with it, but it's not exactly like Power BI. One other thing I'll point out before we go over into the projects is that it's possible to have portfolios and programs, which when we're working on our project, we can tie it or associate it with a specific portfolio and or a program, all right? And all of that will roll up and display here on this kind of larger list. So we've got our, pro our portfolio in there, and then we can see which projects are related to that portfolio. And then we can dive in and open up one of these projects to take a deeper look. For now, though, I'd like to head over to projects. And on the projects page, we'll see a couple of things. Um, there are views here. So the default view is my active projects. I like this because it just shows me my active projects. But then you can also go ahead and select a different view. So if we wanted to look at projects by project manager, for example, we could go ahead and do that. There is an all projects view that has all of the projects in it. So it's a much longer list. And then part of what you can do is you can interact with this. So if I wanted to search for a specific project, I could type my search term in here, click on the magnifying glass and just get the matching results. All right, so at the kind of organizational level, we can have these preset views, but individual users can update their own views by adding grouping or even creating their own view here. I'm going to head back over to the My Active Projects view, and I'm going to start out with um, this project that we created together. All right, so Modern Work Management 01. We'll open this up and take a quick look. Before we actually start updating this project, I did just want to give a little bit of, I guess, a slight orientation. There are some menu buttons up along the top that we can use to interact with. And then here at the top, we'll see our business process flow. So if you're using a governance workflow, we can build that into this business process flow that displays along the top. One of the things that we'll see, I think, as a theme when it comes to Project for the Web is that we have a lot of choices. So if you need things to be very simple and straightforward, that can be accomplished pretty easily. But also, if you need more detail, we can do that as well. And just as our first example of that, when we're looking at this business process flow, if we want to move from one stage to another, it may be as simple as just having the PM click next stage and then we move into the next stage. I actually have a required field here that I did not enter a value in for. That's why it stopped me. So that was pretty straightforward, right? But then sometimes people have workflows that are more complicated. We might have multiple required fields, and we might also have approvers that need to approve before we can move into the next stage. So that can be built in here as well. And then below the business process flow, we've got different tabs. And each tab is going to display different information. We'll do a quick walkthrough of these tabs. And what we'll see with these tabs is that each one is going to have a form attached to it with different fields. What we'll do is we'll walk through some of these different fields and um, make some updates. So these are usually pretty straightforward, but part of what I want to make sure that we'd get a look at is that there are multiple different field types. Some are drop downs where you just select a value. Some of these are people pickers, so this one will look up to our Marquee 360 AD. 
there is a Microsoft Teams and Planner integration field here. So one of the items that Jen and Aaron mentioned at the beginning is collaboration, and that's always something that is at the forefront for us. So here, what we can do is we can set this up so that a team and Microsoft Teams will be created uh, based on this project. All right, so I'm going to select yes there so we can take a look at that. The program and portfolio fields that we looked at earlier, we could go ahead and tie this project with um, a with a uh, program or a portfolio. So I'll do both of those for this project. We can enter in our planned start, our planned finish date, and these fields, sometimes what we'll do is have these carry over from the intake request. A lot of times this is information that somebody would enter in on that intake request. And for any of these fields actually on the project, we can carry over fields from that intake. And what's great about that is it reduces all that double entry. We don't have to look back at the intake to see what was entered in for one of these fields. We can automatically have it carry over. You'll see there's a section with system information and what we can do is we can go ahead and bring over or go over to the next tab. Business case is another one where we would typically have information that's coming over from the intake request, but whether we have information coming over from the intake request or not, what we can do is we can go ahead and update these entries. All right, so you can see we can enter in our problem statement, our project objective, our project scope, our constraints and, and assumptions. There's a priority and urgency score that we can enter in here. And a prioritization score as well. And then we can start to, we can continue to move through these. So on a brand new project, our status in this scenario is set to default to everything being green. All right, we know that's not always the case. We can go ahead and change some of these if we need to. Let's say that because health is at risk, I'm also going to say the overall health is at risk. We'll see that there's a roll up of our issues, our risks and our changes. We haven't quite gotten there yet, but looking at the top, we'll be there pretty soon. Those would all roll up and display here on this form. So you can see the little calculator and icon is letting you know what would come from other areas. All right, so these aren't things that we would enter manually, but they would automatically update. And then we'll get to see our status reports. For this section, I think what I'll do is I'll open up an existing project. And I'll show you what it looks like when you're working on a project that already has uh, the status reports or at least previous status reports. Um, part of why I want to show this is because status reporting is usually more of a, a weekly task, right? So every time that you take your status, and I'm in a different project now, but every time that we take, we capture our project status, it displays as an entry down here. So I can go ahead and open up that status to compare, you know, where we were with where we are now and maybe add that into my current status update. The other thing that I can do on a weekly basis or bi-weekly is go ahead and add a new status report update. All right, and what we're doing here is we can go ahead and fill in some of these fields. So who's submitting it? It could be submitted to a particular person. It can also be set up so that whoever that's being report, um, sent to or submitted to is going to get an email to review this. And then we have some narrative fields, so we can go ahead and enter in what our um, what our recent accomplishments are. It gives us a chance to be able to elaborate on these items, right? So we can go ahead and say what our next steps will be for our next status and then additional comments. So um, let's say that our schedule was yellow or at risk. We can go ahead and explain why that is here in the status update. And once we go ahead and save and close this, we'll see that as an entry under our status reports. So this is the one we just made together. 
And these also, I might be getting a tiny bit ahead, but remember that all of these things kind of work together, right? Our intake request flows into our project. Our project information is going to have roll-ups from other areas, our active risks and our active changes will display here. And all of this project information also displays in reports. Ah, here we go. So I'll open up Power BI just to show the status report since we just looked at status. And I just wanted to show that, I just wanted to show how that status report looks in Power BI. All right, this is a different project, but still we get to see the start and finish date of the prog project. We get to see our progress. We get to see our KPI status indicators with the active risks and issues and changes. And we get to see our narrative fields for each reporting date that we, that we captured. All right, so I just wanted to mention how all of these things come together. All right, so now we're back to the project that we created together. We made a couple of updates to the status summary. We got to see on a different project how the status report updates look here, but it's pretty simple to interact with. We can add our click our new status report and then button and then fill out the fields and then we've got our report out there. The next field we'll look at is the financials, and this is great for really um, straightforward financial tracking. We can go ahead and put in our budget. We can enter in our benefits. Our actual costs can enter in here as well. All right, and then these two fields with the lock next to them, those will be calculated. So this is really good for kind of light financial tracking. We actually have another application that we use called Financials 360 for a heavier financial tracking. So if you're capturing invoices and purchase orders and comparing those with your budget, then that can um, be used in the other cost tracking application. Um, one kind of side note that's interesting about that one also is that if you're using a system for invoice and purchase order tracking, what we can do is have that those invoices and purchase orders enter into the financial tracking app. And that way you have your project information and your financial information all in one place, which of course is going to be really good for reporting purposes. But what we have here is just for light financial tracking. I'm going to go forward to resources and if anybody is familiar with project online or using that now i know we have people using all types of systems but in project online in particular we need to build our project team and then we can assign our resources and for the people that are used to that i just wanted to point out that here we don't need to build our project team yet we could go ahead and build a project team by clicking new here and then looking for a resource adding in their role and then specifying what their start and finish date on the project would be. But another thing that we could do is simply go ahead and start building our schedule. And as we start to assign resources to tasks, they'll automatically roll up and display in this resources area. So for that reason, we're going to not spend too much time here because I really want to spend a little bit more time on the tasks area, which is where you get to see all of your scheduling. All right, and for project managers, this is kind of the most important part for us, the part that um, that we really want to see how this looks in Project for the Web. Earlier, when we were talking about the business process flow, I mentioned that you can make this as detailed or as simple as you want in, in Project for the Web. So that's part of what I want to look at here. On the tasks area, you will see that there are three different ways to look at tasks. I actually like to cycle through these different areas as I'm building my, my project schedule. So we'll start out in the grid view. You can see that you can um, add tasks in here. I just saw a question pop up about whether or not you can have a schedule template applied here. And the answer is yes. That is also part of when we were creating the intake request and we chose a project type, that is something that could differentiate between different project types, what that schedule template looks like. For demo purposes, I chose a project that doesn't have a schedule template just because I wanted to make sure that we could look at this part and see how simple and easy it is to add tasks. But the other part of this that is useful for people that um, 
would be using a schedule template is that you would still use the process that we're looking at now to add tasks to that template if you needed to. So I'm going to quickly add in a few tasks. I won't add too many so we can actually get to the fun part of seeing how all of this comes together. All right, so we've got a very simple task list now, and if we wanted to leave it at this level, we could. OK, notice that the columns here, we've only got a couple that are showing by default, so we've got quick look, we've got assigned to, we've got duration. I'll go ahead and start to make a couple of assignments. You can see how straightforward that process is, but clicking in the assigned to cell is going to show me the people that I've that are on this team. So I got automatically added as the owner of this project. Neil, you saw that I added him on the resources tab. And let's say I'll assign that task to both of us, but then I can also assign other people to this um, project as well. So we've got Aaron assigned to a task now. I'll take the rest of these tasks for myself, but it's pretty easy to go ahead and assign people to these tasks. All right, and we didn't have to build a team or anything like that. We can just come in here and start to add these assignments. There are some task updates that we could do. So notice that there is this information icon here. This will open up this little tab so we can now set all kinds of information. We can set the start date. Maybe that wasn't the best date to choose for this task. I can set the duration, the percent complete when we're ready. There are checklist items. So if you're used to using um, Microsoft Planner, this part will be familiar. I actually do this a lot with planner tasks is add in these checklist items. So if part one of this and I'll just make them generic part one. Part two and part three and as I enter this in, you'll see in the quick look column that the number of checklist items is going to be reflected there. OK. As I scroll down here and notice that I can enter in, you know, the effort for this task, how much is remaining in the total. Um, let's go ahead and put eight in there. I can add in dependencies. I can add attachment. So there are all types of details that we can add and you can choose kind of how you want to add these in. This task D1, I can also make a subtask. All right, so now task D is a summary task and task D1 and D2 are below it. So there are all kinds of ways to interact with this. Um, I can also add columns. So if we want a more robust schedule, we can go ahead and do that. Before doing that, I should go ahead and add some durations in here. Okay. But if we click on add column, we can add all kinds of columns. So we can add the percent complete. We can add in effort. Uh, we can add in our start date. That's always helpful. And we can add more columns as we see fit. OK, and we can do the same kind of things you're used to in other applications and kind of resize this and shape this view. For now, though, what I'd like to do is show you another way of looking at this, which is the board view. So in the board view, we've got things that are grouped by buckets. So bucket one is here and we can group these any way we'd like. Sometimes what we'll do is we'll group these based on phases of a project. So it could be that we make our buckets initiate, plan, execute and close. It could be that um, we group these by department or which department is going to work on this. So let's say sales will be assigned to some. Let's say that we'll have um, IT assigned to some others. Like a miscellaneous one. And then what we can do to organize our tasks is we can drag and drop them. So now we've got our tasks in the appropriate place. All right. With these, we can also click on these cards. So the same details that I showed you in the other place, we can see these here. I'm going to get to dependencies in a minute. I will I do want to show that these dependencies I could add here, but I have a lot more fun adding them in the way that I'm going to show you, so I'm going to focus on that way. 
So with these buckets, they're pretty flexible. You can go ahead and add buckets and then group these tasks any way you'd like. So these are the buckets that I've created, but you can also group these in different ways in ways that are preset. So I can group these by based on who they're assigned to. I can group these based on progress. And what's fun here is that once something starts, so if we've got task one in progress, the project start should have happened by now. So we can mark project start, that milestone as completed. We can mark something as in progress. We can drag things over to completed. So it's a nice, quick and fun way to update these tasks. All right, and then the timeline view. So now we're seeing all of our, our scheduled tasks. I've kind of jumped around and marked some things as completed, which typically I wouldn't do this early on, but I do want to just show a couple of dependencies and how to add those in the fun way. So you can essentially interact with the Gantt and then update your dependencies using that. All right. Ideally, I would not have gone ahead and marked some of these as in progress or uh, completed yet to stick the start dates there. But what I can do here is I can actually visualize this schedule and then make updates as needed. If I need to extend this by a day or two, I can go ahead and do that. Um, so we can extend these tasks so we can do things like that. For people that prefer to update dependencies this way, it makes it a lot more of a, a lighter feel. OK, so we've got different ways to look at these and interact with them. And then as we start to make those updates, we'll start to see some of the changes in the different views. So each one of these views, we're seeing the same thing, but we're just seeing it in a different way. And what's great there is that you can choose which way you prefer to work with these items, okay? As we're working on our project, we'll start to move over into some of the other tabs here. And I'm trying to keep an eye on the time, so I'll show you I think I'll show you on an existing project these next few tabs because I already have some entries in there. But if we go over to risks, for example, these next few tabs are all set up in a similar way, or at least as far as the format goes. When we first come to the tab, we'll see a roll up of all of the existing items, right? So we get to see where we are so far, and then we can add a new one. So if I need to add a new risk here, there's a form to fill out. Right, and these can be assigned to different people. They can have a category. The importance of this is that this information will roll up into reports. We already saw how the risk can show up on our status report, but we have other Power BI reports as well that can show some of this information. So notice the impact here is required. We can enter in the cost as well. So the cost, the probability, and the impact will all come together to calculate the cost of exposure. These will come together for the exposure. And then we have more of those narrative fields. So if we wanna go ahead and enter in our description, we can go ahead and do that. And then you'll see some of the kind of item information collected at the bottom. And when I save and close, we'll be routed out to that main risks page. And now we see the list of risks with our new item added to it. All right, we can do the same with issues. All right, so we see that there's only one issue here. It's postponed. We can go ahead and add a new issue. I'll show this briefly so we can get a look at the form that shows up, but it's general issue information. And a lot of this, again, will be important because it rolls up into different reports that show these issues. All right. Having this form set here is really helpful because it standardizes everything. And now when we look at reports, you know, we're looking at everything using the same measuring stick. With changes, we can track those as well. One of the things you'll see here is that it's possible to have an approval process in here. I just want to give you a quick look at what the form looks like. We can and we can enter in who requested it and when, who it's assigned to, what type of change it'll be, what the impact will be. We can capture all of those impacts to the schedule as well. And then with the narrative fields, this gives us a chance to really explain the importance of making this change, what the implications of not making it are, and really describe what we're trying to do here. 
All right, we've also got a decision log. So if you want to log decisions that are made for this project, you can go ahead and do that there. And I'll open up an existing one just so we can get an idea of what it looks like. All right, so it's pretty straightforward, but it's all of the decisions that we make during the course of a project. Um, we can track those here. And then lessons learned. It's always great to capture those at the end of the project, or even as we're working through things, we can document our successes and our problems that we encountered so that we can make sure to capture those. All right, including the recommendations that we make for the future related to this. All right, so just a quick recap. We did the intake. We saw the approval of the intake and that became a project that we were able to work on and make updates on. We got to see a glimpse of the reports, so we'll have to circle around and take another quick look at reports. But before we get there, now that we've got all of this project uh, information captured, we do need to talk a little bit about collaboration. And what we'll do is we'll take a look at Microsoft Teams. And here's our Modern Work Management 01 project. So remember, there was a field on the project form. I'll see if I can show it here. On the summary page, there was a field asking if we want to sync this project with Microsoft Teams and Planner, and we chose yes there. And that's what brings us this team here that we're looking at. And what's great about this integration is that if we are working in Teams, let's say that I had that approval request that I was working on earlier and then I need to make a project update, I can kind of just make that update in Teams. Everything that we saw in the browser earlier is also available here to update. So I can advance through the business process workflow. I can update fields if I notice that there's something here that I need to update. And then you can kind of work through this and look at tasks and make updates there. So you've got the option if you're in the browser already and comfortable there, you can make your updates in the browser. You can also do that in Teams if you're already in Teams. There is uh, something that's coming from Microsoft soon um, related to the team member experience, which is going to make it so much easier for team members to be able to come and update their tasks. So in a very similar way that we saw the tasks being updated earlier, team members would be able to come in and, you know, mark their task as in progress or completed and make those updates pretty quickly. For now, though, it is really easy to get to the project through Teams. So um, the other thing I wanted to show is the reports. And I'm going to show some of the reports, um, but I also want to make sure that we leave some time for questions. Um, I just got a whole bunch of IMs all at once. So I've been noticing that there are some questions that I missed so we can come back around to some of those. But while we're in the reporting area, I did just want to make sure that you're aware that we've got a Power BI report pack and everything that I've shown you is part of this pre-configured solution, right? Remember with the pre-configured solution, it comes with all of these items that we've looked at, which should get you off to a great start. And then if there are parts that need to be tweaked, that's possible too. But the report pack essentially has these different report pages. So remember, we talked about the risks and those rolling up into a dashboard. Same with the issues and the changes that we that we viewed earlier. Um, there's also an intake dashboard. So the intake dashboard can show where things are related to those intake requests. So earlier, we started this whole demo looking at this intake gallery. We get a lot of great high level information here and we can even filter and interact with it. But on the reporting page, we get to see um, a lot more detail here. There are links to get back to the item. So if we see something and we wanna learn more about it, we can click on the link to navigate back to that item. There are charts here that display. So we can interact with those charts to filter the report. And for anybody that's not familiar with Power BI, if you click on a part of a, a visual, what'll happen is that it filters the entire report, okay? 
So that's a pretty useful tool to see if we're looking at the projects by request status. We can see a lot of these have projects created, which is great, but then we might want to look at, you know, the ones that were rejected so we can look more at why those were rejected. All right, so we have those kind of capabilities here. I'm going to switch over to this version, but just want to do a quick scroll through so we can quickly look through each one of these reports and maybe not all of them, but just get an idea of how these look. There are some reports that are at the portfolio level, right? So this one at the top was related to the request, the intake requests. There are a couple that are related to the portfolio overall. So looking at our portfolio, all of our, pro, our projects that are in the system, we get an idea of the KPI status, the status indicators for these. So we can see how many are on track, how many are critical, how many are at risk, and get that information here. And then, of course, interact with this to navigate over there. It is possible to create Power BI, Power BI reports as paginated reports um, if Power BI Premium is used. And then that way you can have those printouts and, you know, kind of a different format with the reports. Um, the portfolio dashboard again is meant to give some more general information about the projects, but all of this information, I think the main takeaway here is that the information that we saw earlier is rolling up into these reports so that we can, you know, interact with the reports, filter them, and then kind of slice that, slice and dice that data in different ways. So we can look at the timeline, we can look at overall milestones for our projects in the portfolio health of the program. Remember we saw earlier the ability to have programs and portfolios. We saw the status report earlier, but the risks also roll up into their own dashboard. So if we need to analyze the risks in the portfolio and get into more detail about how things are looking, we can do that. Same with issues. Same with the changes. So we get a really a great amount of information that was collected on those projects using the information that we updated together today. Um, there are also some resource level reports, so you can use these to look at resource assignments to see who's working on what and when and get an idea of when certain resources are available. And I just noticed we've got about five minutes left in our scheduled time, so I'm going to stop myself so that we can take some time to answer questions. Does anybody have any questions? I know we have a lot that were answered already in the chat. All yes, right. So I <clears throat> the general questions have been more around just project for the web, and <clears throat> I was going to suggest we should maybe do a separate session and just project for the web. Um, I think we answered most of them. There was one question just if you within project for the web, can you um, just copy assignments across tasks? like in Excel, or do you have to assign each task to a person? Let's go back over to our task list. So um, copy in Excel, like how you autofill? Yeah. Um, Dupika, I'm not sure about that. Can we do that? I wasn't sure either, so I, <laughs> I said you would I, know, I always do it the long way. I didn't look for the shortcut there. But you know what? I definitely will look into that. I think I could use that shortcut too. So how about if we get back to you on that one? Uh, Mia, hello. Uh, this is Julian from Luxembourg. Uh, apologies, my chat is not working, so I'm, I will uh, just take 30 seconds to ask my question, if that's OK. So sure. I saw that there is a good feature to track the, the progress on in terms of budget. So I'm just curious to understand how the system calculated the, the, um, the burn down, uh, starting from how much was the initial and how does it know what's the remaining budget? What's the way to, uh, to track, the, track the actuals there? Thank you. Yes, so this one we've got, you know, just set up to to um, subtract the actual cost from the budget. But I'm glad you brought that up because any one of these calculated fields, we can build those based on calculations that you're using now. So if we needed to do something that's you know more complicated than this, we could build that formula into the system to have these things auto-calculated. 
And there are a lot of cool things that we can do in Project for the Web um, with those types of conditional fields and calculated fields. So there are a lot of possibilities to keep things very simple or to add in more detail. And I love doing that kind of stuff also because it really cuts back on the amount of work and input that you need to do to have those automatically display. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Sure. Thanks for joining us so late. For anyone else who's still with us, we did put in a survey in the chat and a sugar wish treat for everyone. Um, in the US, you can redeem that until the end of the month. I'm just going to try to get to my slide really quick. Um, thank you guys so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. If you give us our, your feedback on the survey, that would be awesome as well. And I know we had a lot of questions and not a lot of time, so please feel free to reach out. Um, our team will also be reaching out to you guys with the recording um, from the session. So thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone.